Hello everyone. Today, I'm making my first lecture video outside of the house. So now I am uh, actually in front of the sea as I record this lecture video. Okay, so uh, what's our topic for today? Today, I'll teach you how to uh, find a differential equation from a given solution. Okay, so in our previous topics, we are given a certain differential equation and then after that, we're going to find its solution, okay? But now, we'll do the opposite, okay? We are given a known solution, and then afterwards, we'll be, so, uh, we'll be finding for the differential equation that has that given solution, okay? So, uh, if you're ready, let's uh, go to the next slide to give you some of these examples so I can demonstrate to you how to find uh, the differential equation from given solutions. Okay. So, uh, Here's my first example. So find the homogeneous LCCDE whose solutions are first. Okay, so we have y is equal to 2e to the negative t plus 3e to the 2t. So if we recall, uh, in finding the solutions of LCCDE, uh, the roots of the complementary function becomes the exponent of the exponentials. Now, so we'll just apply the same concept. So here, we see an exponential whose exponent is negative 1. So this must be the root of the complementary function. No? And this one also is an exponent of an exponential, meaning that our complementary function has a root of 2, which is positive 2. Now, if we can have the complementary function, we can construct from that complementary function the differential equation using the differential operator. So, for example, in this uh, equation, we'll use the variable m for the complementary function. So, the factors will be m, because this is minus 1, it should be m plus 1 times m minus 2. Okay, now we'll just replace m with the differential operator d. So for this particular root, the factor should be d plus 1. Okay, and for this particular uh, root, which is equal to positive 2, the factor will become d minus 2. Okay, so now we, we just add uh, a dependent variable, no? which in our case is given to be y. Now, so the dependent variable is y, and then we equate it to 0, okay? Why? Y equal to 0? Because it is said, find a homogeneous LCCDE, so it should be equal to 0. Then, from that, we can now uh, express this in terms of uh, the familiar notation y primes and y double primes, no? So, this differential equation is now equivalent to y double prime minus y prime minus 2. So we now have the differential equation, okay? So in our previous topics, usually we are given a differential equation like this, and then afterwards, we'll, uh, we solve for the solution, which is this one. So now we do the opposite, okay? Now let us have a second example. For number two, let us solve this, no? Uh, the, the known solution of the DE is y equals 7e to the 3x plus 2x. Okay. So now, uh, let us find the corresponding differential equation that has this solution. Okay. Now, let us look at the roots. No? So an exponential here has a root of positive 3. Therefore, our differential equation should have a term d minus 3. Okay. d minus 3. For this particular root. And here, we have a power function. No, this is not an exponential. So, if you recall, when uh, do we uh, encounter a power function in the solution of an LCCD? No? If there is a root, equal to what? No? If you recall, when do we obtain a power function in the solution of a DE? Whenever we obtain a root equal to, yes, the zero. Okay, so this must uh, correspond to a root of zero. However, if the root is zero, then we should have a constant term in the solution. But this is not constant. No, this is a constant multiplied by x. So therefore, the zero must be repeated. So there must be two zeros. 
no? In your roots, okay? So that is why we will have the term d squared because zero is a repeated root. Okay, d squared. And then, of course, we add the dependent variable here. The dependent variable is y. So, we just add y and equate it to 0. So, we now have the d, which we can uh, distribute. No, uh, We can distribute this term. So, we can obtain this. So, we have d cubed minus 3d squared. y is equal to 0. So, this is now our differential equation. So, if you have observed, this d is a third order d. And this one is a second order D. Okay? Now, let us go to the last example. Dali lang, di ba? Sobrang dali. Okay. So, here, we have y equals 6 plus 3t e to the t minus cosine t. Okay. So, here, we find a constant term in the solution, which means that if you have a constant term in the solution, that corresponds to a root of, yes, 0. Okay. So, we must have a term D, no? D alone in the DE. Okay. Now, for the second term here, we have a uh, power function T multiplied to an exponential. So, that means that we have a root of positive 1. Okay. But since this term has a multiplier T, then that positive 1 root is duplicated. No, it's a double root. Okay. So, for the positive 1 root here, there should be a term D minus 1 in our solution. No? However, since that uh, uh, root is repeated, we have to square D minus 1. Okay? Because it's a double root. No? How did we know that it's a double root? Because of the multiplier T. Okay? And then minus. So, in the last term, we have a cosine term. No? So, in uh, finding the solutions of... Uh, a homogeneous LCCDE, when do we obtain sinusoidal terms? No? We obtain sinusoidal terms if we have a complex conjugate root. No? And if we have a complex conjugate, if that has an imaginary part and a real part, then that would be a product of an exponential and a sinusoidal term. No? But this is purely sinusoidal, which indicates that there must be no real term. The root must be purely imaginary no so if the root is a plus minus bi no then a must be zero because this is purely imaginary and what will be the value of our b no so b no so remember the imaginary part of the root corresponds to the multiplier in the angle here the angle is actually no one lagyan natin dito one 1t. Okay, so that one is actually the multiplier of p. No? And uh, b must be equal to 1. Therefore, the root is plus minus i. Okay, plus minus i. And how are we going to come up with a root that is equal to plus minus i? No? Then we have to, or we need to have, the square root of something negative. That is why when we write it in terms of the differential operator, it should be d squared, no? d squared plus 1, no? d squared plus 1. So, if that factor, if you solve for d, no? you, you transpose that positive 1 to the other side, you'll get negative 1. And if you get the square root of that, you'll get an imaginary number. Okay, so the last term for this d e is uh, d squared plus 1. Again, how did we come up with this? Okay, when we transpose this to the other side, we will get positive 1. And when we get the square root, we will get plus minus i, which corresponds to this root. No? Okay, whose value of b is equal to 1. So let's just add the dependent variable y and equate it to 0. And now finally, we have the d. No? So this is now our differential equation in factored form. Now, we can rewrite this no, as, so this is now the DE no, that corresponds to this factor differential equation. So now, we see that uh, the DE is a fifth order DE. Okay, this is a fifth order DE. So, if you are given this DE and you solve no, for it, you must have or you should have a solution that looks like this. Okay. So 
That's it. So the topic is quite easy. If you remember our topic in finding the solution of a homogeneous LCCDE, this is just uh, the opposite. Now, here we just do the opposite process. Okay. So uh, that's the end of our topic. I hope you learned something. You end. Bye.